It's hard to believe it's been almost 20 years since that fateful summer I spent as a park ranger in the remote forests of Northern California. I was 22 and had just graduated from UC Davis with a degree in environmental science. Being young and eager to make my mark, I jumped at the seasonal position doing trail maintenance and giving nature tours in the Trinity Alps wilderness. The drive up to the ranger station gave me my first taste of the area's isolation. After passing Weaverville, the last major town for over a hundred miles, I followed winding mountain roads through densely wooded hills. Occasionally I'd pass a lonely house or a trailhead packed with cars belonging to weekend backpackers. But mostly it was just my little Volkswagen and the staggering view of rugged, untamed nature. After two hours I reached the ranger station, a simple A-frame cabin and shop nestled in a high alpine valley. The place was staffed seasonally with only two permanent rangers and four college kids like me hired to help manage the trails and lead visitor tours. My fellow seasonal ranger Wendy showed me around the small compound. Cell service is pretty much non-existent up here, even the radio and satellite phone cut in and out with these mountains, she explained. Our sleeping quarters were in a bunkhouse out back, while the main cabin served as an office, radio room, and kitchen. After stowing my gear in the bunkhouse, I joined Wendy on a short hike to familiarize myself with the landscape. Dense fir and cedar forests clung to steep slopes that shot up on all sides to bare rocky peaks. Snow still lingered in shady ravines, and melt-swollen creeks tumbled down from glaciers hanging above distant valleys. This was true wilderness, a rare and magical place. Over the next week, I fell into a routine waking before dawn to help maintain trails, then doing patrols or leading tourist groups on nature hikes in the afternoons. The days were long and physically demanding, but immensely rewarding. Each night I'd collapse satisfied into my bunk. On my days off, I enjoyed exploring the backcountry on my own. The solitude and sweeping vistas were sublime. One Sunday, I set out to climb Mount Eddy, a 9000-foot peak with a commanding view. The route up followed switchbacks through flower-strewn meadows, then a boulder field to the windswept summit. At the top, the world unfolded below in an endless wrinkled carpet of green forest and grey stone. I sat for an hour, watching the sunlight slowly slide down distant peaks. The hike had taken all day, and by the time I descended, the sun was brushing the treetops. I quickened my pace, hoping to reach the ranger station before darkness fell completely. These mountains became disorienting at night. But within a half mile, I had lost the trail and wandered into a dense stand of trees. My anxiety rose as the last light faded. Strange noises echoed around me. Was that a branch breaking? My heart pounded, senses pinging for any slight movement in the brush. Realizing I was working myself into a panic, I stopped and took a deep breath. I calmed my mind and headed downhill, eventually picking up the trail. By the time the ranger station lights appeared, I was exhausted and sweating, but the relief was tremendous. After that, I made sure to leave ample time to get out of the backcountry before sunset. As June neared its end, more hikers began appearing in the high country, seeking early season adventures. Each week our workload increased as we prepared campsites and maintained trails for the coming summer crush. One afternoon, my radio crackled with a call that a visitor had injured themselves falling into a creek up on Mount Eddy. I hiked up the switchbacks to the reported location, arriving in under an hour thanks to my knowledge of the trail. The woman had badly sprained her ankle and couldn't put weight on it. After stabilizing the injury, I helped her slowly limp down to the trailhead where her worried husband waited. My supervisor commended me for the quick response. Word of the incident must have gotten around because, in the following days, I noticed more hikers on the Mount Eddy Trail eyeing me with recognition and gratitude. It felt good helping people appreciate these wild places while staying safe. Fourth of July weekend brought clear weather and even more visitors to the Trinity Alps. Our small crew was run off our feet managing the crowds, cleaning sites, answering questions, 
and rescuing the occasional hiker who bit off more than they could chew. I was proud of how we all worked together as a team to meet the challenge. By Sunday evening, the holiday crowds had vanished as quickly as they'd appeared. We collapsed in the bunkhouse, all looking forward to the slower weeks of midsummer. But that week, everything would change. I was ten miles into my weekly patrol of the northern trails when I first spotted the man stumbling along the path. His skinny body was hunched over, struggling against some invisible force. Even from a distance, I could tell he was in bad shape. Hey there, I called out. Are you okay? The man jerked his head up with the panic of an animal hearing a predator's footsteps. His eyes were sunken and bloodshot. He opened his mouth as if to respond, but only a choked gurgle came out. I rushed over just as his legs started to give out. Whoa, easy now. I've got you. I grabbed the man under his shoulders before he could collapse completely. He was disturbingly gaunt under his torn, filthy clothing. Monsters, he croaked. Coming. For me. Look at me, I said firmly. You're safe now. I'm Park Ranger Laura. I'm going to help you, okay? The man's breathing came in ragged gasps. I needed to get some food and water into him quickly before he went into shock. I lowered him onto a flat rock at the side of the trail. Kneeling, I unscrewed my canteen and held it to his cracked lips. Small sips, I instructed. After a few swallows, he went into a coughing fit, but color started to return to his grayish face. I dug some trail mix out of my pack and managed to coax him into eating a handful of the nuts and raisins. As his initial delirium passed, the man seemed to focus on me for the first time. Thank you, he croaked. I'm, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you, Chris, I said with an encouraging smile. Now just rest for a minute. You're going to be okay. But Chris's eyes took on a vacant, haunted look again. No. No. It's still coming. I can feel it. His voice dropped to a frantic whisper. There are things in these woods. Evil things. I glanced uneasily at the silent trees surrounding us. Chris, look at me. You were lost in the woods, right? It can play tricks on your mind out here. He seized my arm with unexpected strength. You have to believe me, he pleaded. I saw it take James. Oh God, the screaming. Who's James? I asked gently. When Chris just stared ahead in mute horror, I tried again. What did you see? Chris's whole body began to tremble. The monster. Pale flesh. Razor claws dot dot dot. It dragged him away into the darkness. He trailed off as his eyes darted around wildly. The poor man was clearly very traumatized. But whether his ramblings were from some real experience or mental break I couldn't be sure. For now, I just needed to keep him calm. Okay, take deep breaths, I soothed. We'll get you out of here soon. I'm going to call for a helicopter evacuation. I stepped away and radioed in our coordinates, requesting emergency transport. The dispatcher said the weather prevented air access until the following morning. We'd have to hunker down here tonight. As the sun dipped below the ridgeline, I gathered wood and kindling to start a fire. Its crackling warmth seemed to lull Chris into a daze. I boiled water and made us both hot soup from my rations. Chris stared blankly at the flames as he sipped. When he finished eating, I spread out my sleeping bag and mat. You should rest, I said. Chris didn't resist as I eased him down. His eyes were already fluttering closed from exhaustion, but he continued to mumble disjointedly. It won't stop dot 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 com ing for me. Found me again. I squeezed his hand. Sleep. No one's going to hurt you now. He was out in minutes. I added more wood to the fire and leaned against a log facing him. The last rays of the sun faded away, leaving us cloaked in darkness. I checked that my pistol was loaded and within reach. Not that I really thought I'd need protection from monsters. Poor Chris had just cracked under exposure and hunger. Still, 
his ravings sent a shiver through me. I peered out into the impenetrable night, pressing in around our camp. With the firelight dancing eerily on the trees, I couldn't escape the feeling of sinister eyes watching us. The next morning I was up before dawn, anxious to get Chris safely evacuated. The poor man clearly needed medical care and psychiatric counseling. Part of me wondered if it really was all in his head, or if something truly sinister lurked in these woods. But I pushed those thoughts aside as the distant thrum of chopper blades approached. Right on schedule, the rescue helicopter appeared above the treetops. I gently shook Chris awake and helped him stand on wobbly legs. It's time to go. The helicopter is here for you, I said. Chris gripped my arm, eyes darting around fearfully. Do you hear it? The monster's close. I can feel it watching. You're safe now, I promise. I kept my voice calm and led him firmly towards the clearing. No more monsters. You're going to the hospital. He stayed huddled against me as we ducked under the whirring blades. Once Chris was buckled into a seat, I stepped back and gave him a reassuring wave. But as the chopper lifted off the ground, Chris screamed over the deafening engine. It sees me. Oh God, it's coming. His hysterical pleas faded away as the helicopter rose over the treetops and sped off. I stood watching it disappear, my heart aching for the broken man inside. With a heavy sigh, I turned and headed back down the trail alone. Chris clearly had severe psychological trauma, though whether it was based in reality or delusion, I couldn't be sure. I said a silent prayer for his recovery. As I hiked, a strange unease crept over me. The forest was eerily still and watchful. I shook off the feeling, quickening my pace. Chris's ramblings were affecting me more than I cared to admit. Focus, I told myself. You know these woods like the back of your hand. A raven's cry made me jump. Get a grip, Laura. Still, I couldn't ignore the prickle on my neck, like unseen eyes tracking me. I glared into the underbrush defiantly. See? Nothing there. You're letting fear get the best of you. By late afternoon, the silence felt suffocating. I paused, turning in a slow circle. Nothing looked amiss, yet my instincts screamed something was wrong. I fumbled for my radio but got only static. Swallowing hard, I continued on, pacing my breaths. You're almost to the ranger station. Don't lose it now. A crack of snapping branches whipped me around, hand on my holster. Adrenaline spiked through me. Easy girl, probably just a deer. Still, I quickened my steps. The trees themselves seemed to creep nearer, light fading as their limbs wove tighter overhead. Another sharp crack exploded, even closer. I broke into a run, my heart hammering against my ribs. The trail tunneled ahead into featureless darkness. Rasping breaths echoed my own. Glimpses of pale, sinewy movement flashed between the trees. No, I realized with dizzying horror. Those weren't echoes. Something was right behind me. I screamed as a dark shape hurtled past within inches, putting on an impossible burst of speed. The radio was useless. No one was coming to help. I needed to hide. Now. I veered off the trail into the brush. Thorns and branches lashed my skin as I crashed through the undergrowth. Finding a small hollow beneath some boulders, I dove inside, clamping my hands over my mouth to stifle my gasps. I could only pray the thing hadn't seen where I went. Frozen in terrified silence, I strained to hear any sound of pursuit over my thundering pulse. The forest had gone deathly quiet. Minutes crawled by with no sign of disturbance. Finally, I risked sliding out my pistol. The weight of it steadied me slightly, but I knew bullets would only slow this thing, not kill it. I had to make it to the ranger station. Hidden beneath a rocky overhang, I tried to control my ragged breathing as the sun slowly sank below the treetops. The forest noises that usually faded at dusk were replaced by other, more disturbing sounds. Crackling branches, Echoing cries, guttural muttering just out of range. 
whatever was out there hunting me was no ordinary animal. My hands shook as I checked my pistol's magazine for the dozenth time. Eight rounds left. Useless against this thing if I didn't get a clean headshot, which seemed unlikely given the speed it moved. Spying between the branches, I searched desperately for some sign of my pursuer. There, a fleeting shift of movement. I squinted into the growing darkness. One shadow detached itself from the rest, loping through the underbrush. It paused, tilting its head as if sniffing the air. My blood turned to ice as it swiveled unnaturally to peer directly at my hiding spot with reflective, inhuman eyes. In the fading light, I glimpsed a bald, skeletal figure crouched on all fours. I slapped a hand over my mouth to hold in a scream as I finally understood Chris's delirious ravings. This thing was real, and it had my scent. I huddled motionless as the creature slunk closer. My mind reeled with how such a being could exist, but I shoved aside those thoughts. I needed to survive the next five minutes, not unravel cosmic mysteries. The thing paused just yards away, head twitching side to side as it searched for me. I forced myself not to flinch as its black gaze swept over my thicket. With a gravelly hiss, it bounded away into the underbrush. I nearly sobbed in relief. The reprieve would be brief, though. I had to put as much distance between me and that thing as possible. While I still had light, I eased from my hiding spot and took off running. Twigs and stones cut into my feet, but I didn't slow down. Better injured than dead. Behind me echoed unmistakable sounds of pursuit. I pushed harder, even as burning lungs begged for rest. When I came across a small creek, I jumped in without hesitation, hoping the water would confuse my scent trail. Static buzzed from my radio as I burst from the trees into a moonlit meadow. Mayday! Mayday! I gasped into the handset. Ranger in distress, requesting immediate backup at... The only reply was garbled white noise. No one was coming to the rescue this time. Up ahead loomed a granite face I'd have to detour around. As I paused to get my bearings, a guttural cry rang out, closer than expected. I fired two shots blindly toward it before stumbling on. Later I found myself collapsed on a stony outcrop, heaving for breath. The adrenaline fueling my headlong flight was spent. As the moon rose, the aches of my abused body screamed for acknowledgement. But rest wasn't an option. Somewhere behind me, the creature waited. I ran blindly through the darkness, throat raw from screaming into the void. The thing pursuing me moved swiftly, keeping to the shadows. Its unnatural mutters echoed around the trees, impossible to pinpoint. Exhaustion seeped into my bones, but I didn't dare stop. To pause even a moment was to surrender to the horrors lurking in this forest. Thorns tore at my skin as I crashed through the underbrush. I focused on the sting, using the pain to anchor myself against the panic threatening to overwhelm me. The dark forest seemed to press in from all sides as I staggered aimlessly through the night. My throat was raw and lungs burning from hours of screaming into the void for help. But no one was coming. The only reply was the mocking echo of my own panicked cries through the trees. And always, just out of sight but drawing relentlessly nearer, the unnatural mutters of the thing pursuing me. I lost all track of time and direction during that desperate, lonely flight. The monstrous creature herded me like prey, staying in the shadows but inexorably driving me forward through the trackless woods. Thorns and branches tore viciously at my skin and clothes, shredding my uniform shirt to tatters. My ripped and bloodied boots slipped on loose stones as I careened blindly on, barely keeping my footing. The iron taste of fear coated my tongue. I couldn't keep this up much longer. My exhausted limbs grew heavier with each frantic step, reflexes dulling dangerously. But to stop even for a moment meant surrendering to the unspeakable horror trailing me. So I forced leaden legs to keep churning, lungs to keep pumping, focused only on surviving the next minute, 
and the one after that. Just before dawn, I stumbled out of a thicket and found myself in a rocky creek bed. My overwhelmed mind took long seconds to even comprehend it wasn't more endless forest. I stood swaying, ears ringing, and breath coming in ragged gasps. Gradually, the sound of flowing water registered. Salvation. I followed the beckoning murmur until my rubbery legs finally gave out on the smooth, damp stones lining the creek's bank. I collapsed in an ungainly heap, every muscle quivering with utter fatigue. The frigid creek water provided blessed relief against my hot, grimy skin as I lay there. With enormous effort, I rolled over and began splashing handfuls of it onto my face and arms, washing away some of the sweat and dirt caked on me. The chill of it helped pierce the fog shrouding my mind. As adrenaline from my panicked flight drained rapidly away, the true depth of my exhaustion became apparent. It was tempting to just lay my head down on the wet stones and give in to the desperate longing for rest, if only for a moment. My swollen eyelids begged to close against the gray pre-dawn light. But I couldn't sleep. Not yet. To let my guard down was to surrender myself completely to the horrors still lurking out in the darkness of that forest. There would be time for rest later, if I survived. With a pained groan, I pushed myself up to a sitting position. Though every fiber of my being screamed in protest, I forced myself to take stock of my situation as morning approached. I needed to get oriented and move. Mm. My strength was nearly spent, but I couldn't lose hope. Shivering, I wrapped my arms around myself and stared down at the tattered remains of my uniform shirt. It hung off me in filthy rags, leaving my scratched and bruised arms bare. My ripped hiking boots were stained with blood from countless nicks and scratches accumulated during that hellish night flight. I bent stiffly to check them, hissing as the cuts on my feet protested. Nothing serious, but they would slow me down. Fumbling at my belt with trembling, damp hands, I unclipped my pistol and brought it unsteadily up to inspect. Just two rounds left in the magazine. Two slim bullets were all that stood between me and an unimaginably gruesome end. Fear twisted my gut, but I forced a fierce resolve to temper it. Making those shots count was my only chance. Taking a deep, bracing breath, I gazed up at the lightning sky visible through the tangled branches overhead. It was time to move. With monumental effort, I pushed up onto shaky legs, swaying as dizziness threatened to pull me back down. I stood gripping a tree, waiting for the sensation to pass, a prayer on my lips. Please let this night end. Let me see the sun again. The diffuse gray light of pre-dawn revealed little of my surroundings. I stared blankly through the tangled branches, disoriented and lost after a night spent crashing blindly through these woods. Panic and exhaustion had shattered any sense of direction during that hellish flight. Now, as the promise of a new day slowly permeated the sky overhead, I realized I had become completely turned around in the darkness. These trees provided no familiar landmarks to guide me. I closed my eyes, swaying slightly as I tried to steady my ragged breathing. Think. I had to orient myself before moving another step. Kneeling carefully to avoid putting weight on my cut and blistered feet, I studied the forest floor, searching for signs to read the land. A ridge of sloping rocks led down to the creek beside me. Water flowed from higher elevations to lower ones. If I followed this creek downstream, it should lead to bigger rivers with trails. Craning my neck, I next inspected the trees themselves. Moss clung heavily to the north side of the trunks while the south-facing bark remained bare. If the dawn light was coming from the east as expected, then the moss indicated that direction was north. I needed to go generally south and west. I rose slowly, ignoring the trembling in my exhausted limbs. The scant information gleaned from my surroundings would have to guide me for now. Without proper gear or daylight, there was no way to be completely sure. But I had no other choice but to trust my basic compass skills. I could only pray they didn't lead me in worse circles. 
Gripping my pistol in clammy hands, I chose my path and started walking. Each step was agony across my torn soles, but I gritted my teeth against the pain, moving as swiftly as injuries allowed. Better to suffer than to wait here like a lamb for slaughter. Despite the rising sun at my back, the shadows between the trees seemed to creep closer, shuddering with hidden menace. I strained all my senses for signs of the creature's presence. Thus far the morning remained hushed, but for the gurgle of the creek and tentative morning bird song. It was comforting to hear that normal forest sounds again after the eerie silence of the night. Perhaps the return of daylight had driven the monster into hiding for now. But I harbored no illusion that I was free of it. No, it was simply biding its time, letting me expend precious energy stumbling towards imagined safety. It would trail just out of sight, toying with me, waiting for exhaustion to deliver me helplessly into its claws. The thought sent a chill colder than the creek water down my spine. I could not let my guard down for an instant. Every snapped twig and rustle of brush set my nerves thrumming like electrified wires. I walked lightly, stopping frequently to listen. Each time the forest held its breath. Eventually, my own breathing and heartbeat roared deafeningly loud in the absence of other sounds. I clutched my gun, slick palm leaving condensation on the grip. The morning wore on as I hiked aimlessly through the tangled woods. With no trail to follow, I clambered over moss-slicked logs and pushed through grasping bushes, feeling utterly lost. As the adrenaline that had fueled my all-night flight sputtered out, despair crept over me. I was alone and being hunted in this labyrinth of trees, with no idea how to escape. When I stumbled upon an old campsite, my heart leaped. Circled by stones was the unmistakable outline of where a tent had stood. Next to it, a trail wound away into the forest. Hope fluttered in my chest. Trails always led somewhere. I murmured a prayer as I stepped onto the narrow, overgrown path. Let it guide me to the ranger station, to safety. Please. The surrounding trees seemed to crowd together, branches interlacing overhead to block out the morning sun. An unnatural silence gripped the forest as if it was holding its breath. The complete absence of birdsong or squirrels scrambling up trunks unnerved me. It was as if the entire woodland was waiting, a coiled spring ready to unleash violent chaos. I walked as swiftly as my battered feet could manage, hyper aware of each rustle or crack. The trail gave focus to my movement, but also funneled me predictably forward easy prey for the predator that surely still stalked me, somewhere in the watching trees. My eyes constantly scanned the shadowy spaces between trunks, searching for any sign of unnatural movement. By the time I glimpsed distant buildings through the foliage, I was stumbling badly. Tears of relief streamed down my grimy cheeks. I had made it. My ordeal was almost over. Mustering the very last of my strength, I broke into a limping run. Each impact sent shockwaves of pain up my legs, but I gritted my teeth and pushed onward. Safety beckoned. So close now. Closer and closer the buildings grew. I could make out the familiar shapes. There was the main office, the generator shed. My home for the past two summers. I was nearly there. With no warning, a piercing howl tore through the air just feet behind me. My head whipped around to see a pale, skinny humanoid shape hurtling out from the trees, claws outstretched. I screamed and fired wildly over my shoulder as I dove off the trail, hearing the shots crack harmlessly into trees. Heart seizing in my chest, I stumbled and crashed hard to the forest floor. For one paralyzing moment, I lay winded. Then, the heavy footfalls nearby jolted me upright. Ignoring my limbs screaming protests, I scrambled to my feet and sprinted for those sanctuary buildings, now almost close enough to touch, glimmering in the sunlight filtering through the trees. So close, so close. Please let me make it. I burst through the front door of the ranger station, 
the solid wood frame nearly coming off its hinges as I slammed it closed behind me. My heart was hammering violently in my chest as I frantically threw my full weight against the door, struggling to turn the lock with my trembling, bloody fingers. A split second later, a heavy thud collided with the door from outside, making the whole thing shudder on its hinges. I jumped back with a gasp, pulse roaring in my ears. The flimsy lock wouldn't hold it for long. Pure animal panic flooded my veins as I scanned the familiar surroundings of the ranger station's main room, desperately searching for anything I could use to further barricade the entrance. My eyes landed on the old wooden desk in the corner, weighed down by a bulky filing cabinet next to it. That would have to work. I rushed over and gripped the edges of the heavy furniture. With almost inhuman strength born of complete and utter terror, I ground my teeth and heaved them screeching in protest across the floor until they blocked the door. It wouldn't hold out the monster for long, but I just needed time, time to grab a weapon and call for help. Outside, furious blows began hammering relentlessly against the station's walls as the pale creature tried to break in and get to me. I could hear the boarded front window splintering inwards under the heavy assault. I ducked instinctively and raced for the back room that housed the emergency gun locker. My boots slipped in the blood trail I'd left across the floorboards. I struggled for traction, arms windmilling to stay upright. More bone-jarring impacts echoed through the small station's interior. The whole building seemed to shudder with the force of the battering it was enduring. Finally, I stumbled into the storage room, towards the gray metal locker along the back wall. The combination lock trembled in my slick, red-stained fingers. Blood pounded behind my eyes, roaring like the ocean surf. Through it, the sounds of shattering glass and splintering wood came from the other room. The creature was nearly through. I forced myself to breathe, to focus, as I carefully turned the combination dial, picturing the memorized numbers in my mind. On the third try, the locker clicked open. Inside lay a pump-action shotgun and rows of ammunition boxes. I grabbed the shotgun with one hand while the other scooped up boxes of shells indiscriminately. A loud scraping came from behind the storage room's door. My head jerked up and I froze. It was inside. Please work, I begged silently as I turned on the radio and keyed the SOS frequency. But only static greeted me. The surrounding mountains were still blocking any signal. The heavy slams against the exterior walls had ceased, leaving an eerie silence in their wake. The creature had stopped trying to get in, at least for the moment. Gripping the useless radio tighter, I slowly approached the barricaded front door. My light steps seemed to echo thunderously in the quiet. Pressing my ear tentatively against the wood, I listened hard past the frantic pounding of blood in my ears. No sound came from outside except the nervous twittering of birds returning to the trees. No heavy footfalls, no panting or scrape of claws, just stillness. A flicker of desperate hope rose in my chest. Maybe, just maybe, I had managed to elude the monster after all. Perhaps it had given up the hunt and retreated. But no. I couldn't let blind optimism lower my guard now, not with my own eyes confirming its death. Still, as the minutes ticked by in silence, I considered risking a look outside. I could leave the safety of the station to be rescued, or wait here for who knows how long until help arrived. It was a gamble either way. I wavered, chewing my stubbled nails anxiously. Live or die, the choice was mine. After several tense minutes spent pacing and weighing my options, I steeled my nerves. Gripping my gun with slick palms, I shuffled the heavy cabinet aside and cracked open the front door. The warm light of morning spilled in, calming my frayed senses. The familiar porch and sun-dappled trees looked so ordinary, so safe. I lifted my boot to step outside. A wet, squelching sound made me look down. My soul was soaked in a crimson puddle seeping from underneath the door. Heart seizing, I swung the door wider. Dark blood streaked the weathered boards in erratic patterns, but no body lay there. 
relief washed over me as the obvious conclusion surfaced. The creature must have been mortally wounded somehow. It couldn't have gotten far. I eased the rest of the way outside, stepping cautiously onto the blood-streaked boards of the porch. My eyes tracked the sporadic trail of dark drops leading off the steps and winding into the encroaching trees. Though every instinct screamed to stay barricaded inside, I knew I had to follow it. I needed to see the creature's broken corpse with my own eyes, to know beyond any shred of doubt that the horror that had pursued me relentlessly through the night was well and truly dead. Readying my frayed nerves and gripping the pistol tighter to still my shaking hands, I stepped off the porch and crossed the short distance to the tree line. Passing into the shadows beneath the bowing canopy, I maneuvered carefully over gnarled roots and fallen branches, gun aimed and ready. Filtered morning light dappled the forest floor, birds twittered cheerfully in the branches overhead. Yet tension still coiled tightly in my muscles, half expecting the beast to leap out from behind a broad trunk at any second. The sporadic trail of dark crimson droplets wove on through the underbrush ahead, each one vividly pronounced against the verdant green. I traced their erratic path slowly, pulse thundering in my ears despite the tranquil scene. The surrounding ferns and bushes showed no signs of disturbance, no broken stems or scattered leaves to indicate the creature's passing. Only those small, ominous splashes of red to guide me onward. Abruptly, the macabre trail ended, dots fading out twenty yards into the woods. I froze, eyes widening in dismay, breath catching sharply in my throat. No, 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 it wasn't possible. Not after everything I had suffered and survived to reach this supposed sanctuary. There, lying crumpled in a ravaged heap of mangled flesh and fur, was the massive body of a black bear. Remnants of its entrails strewn about, neck twisted back on itself from being snapped. My mind reeled in horror at what I was seeing. This carcass was fresh, killed just this morning. I had been deceived. A soft rustle sounded from somewhere overhead. My head jerked up towards the sound before I could stop myself. There, perched on a low, moss-shrouded branch, crouched the impossibly gaunt and pale form of the creature. Its wet, gray flesh glistened in the sunlight. I stood paralyzed in the glare of those chilling obsidian eyes, unable to breathe, to think, to do anything but stare helplessly as the creature silently dropped to the forest floor in front of me, blocking any hope of escape. The creature stalked towards me, its movements unnaturally fluid and graceful, like a predator certain of its impending kill. My heel caught on a tree root as I scrambled backward. Arms flailing, I toppled over the savaged remains of the bear's carcass and crashed painfully onto the hard forest floor. The impact jarred my senses, scattering the cloying paralysis of fear that had seized my mind. Adrenaline surged through my veins, lending strength to my trembling muscles. I couldn't give up yet. Gritting my teeth, I pushed through the pain and clawed my way back to my feet. I had beaten impossible odds to survive this far. I would not die whimpering like a lamb at slaughter. The creature paused its measured approach, tilting its hairless head with interest as I backed away. Its void black eyes tracked my movement hungrily beneath a pale, elongated skull. The faint morning light gleamed wetly off its muscles beneath leathery skin as it moved, razor claws flexing eagerly. I couldn't outrun this thing on my weakened legs. I needed a weapon if I had any hope of escaping its clutches. Spying a fallen branch within reach, I darted for it as the creature tensed to pounce. My hands closed around solid wood just as it sprung. I swung with all my remaining might, adrenaline lending strength to my exhausted limbs. The branch cracked with a resounding thwack across the monster's skull. Howling, it recoiled sideways, clawed hands grasping its face as inky blood streamed from the scalp wound down its face. I had dazed it, but not for long. This was my only chance. I lunged desperately for my fallen pistol, fingers scrabbling in the leaf litter until they finally closed around the grip. 
whirling back towards the creature, I fired off two successive rounds point-blank into its chest. The gunshots boomed deafeningly between the trees. The creature's shriek of pain and fury pierced my eardrums like jagged metal. Yet it remained upright, limbs coiling. My eyes widened. The small rounds had impacted pale flesh, but passed clean through rather than stopping it. Still, dark blood now seeped from multiple wounds. I had injured it, if not killed. Perhaps just enough to slow it a precious few seconds so I can escape. I pushed myself up and ran, my weakened legs screaming in protest as I wove drunkenly between the trees. Each impact sent shockwaves of bone-deep pain jolting through my battered body. But I forced leaden feet to keep churning, lungs gasping raggedly for air. The creature's enraged cries echoed behind as it gave pursuit, driving me onward faster through sheer desperation. Safety was so close now, just ahead past the tree line. I could make it if I just kept moving. The shape of the ranger station emerged from between the trees, less than fifty yards ahead. It was so close now. Yet those last few dozen yards may as well have been miles with the creature in pursuit just behind me. Still, I now had a chance. I repeated the desperate mantra again and again in my mind, willing leaden legs to keep churning. Just a little farther. Don't stop. You can do this. The station grew tantalizingly nearer with each stride, but so too did the frenzied wails of the wounded creature doppelring after me. It was slowed by injuries but not dead, not nearly enough to halt its relentless hunt. Twenty yards now. Ten. My lungs burned like fire in my heaving chest. Still, I pushed harder. With a final explosive burst, I ran up the creaking steps of the porch and slammed bodily into the solid wooden door. Searing pain exploded through my shoulder from the impact, but I barely registered it as I grasped desperately for the handle. The guttural roars were nearly upon me as I wrenched the door inward and dove across the threshold. Somehow, I found the coordination to turn even as I fell and slam my palm against the bolt lock, throwing it home. Seconds later, the entire door shuddered violently under a heavy collision as the enraged creature flung itself against the barrier now separating us. The walls reverberated from the force of the blows as it shrieked and clawed wildly on the other side. But this time, the sturdy frame held firm. Dropping my forehead against the floorboards in dizzying relief, I gasped for air between ragged sobs. The frenzied pounding soon faded away into the forest as the creature retreated. For now, at least, I was safe. I had survived against all odds. As my breathing slowed and adrenaline seeped from my veins, the full weight of utter exhaustion pressed down, luring me toward unconsciousness. But I couldn't rest yet. Gripping the door handle weakly, I used it to pull my battered body upright. Swaying, I leaned there gathering my strength as the familiar confines of the station swam around me. Sitting here now, it's surreal to think it's been almost twenty years since that terrifying experience in the forest. In some ways it feels like yesterday, the images and sensations are still so viscerally burned into my mind. I still occasionally jerk awake at night from nightmares of glowing eyes and pale flesh flashing between the dark trees. But during my waking hours, the memories have dulled and faded somewhat, become almost detached, like something that happened to another person. It's the only way my psyche can process such trauma. By compartmentalizing it into its own small box in my mind, closed off and separated from my present reality. After the creature finally retreated back into the depths of the forest, I managed to barricade myself inside the small ranger station. Adrenaline spent, I sank to the floor and slipped into unconsciousness. I awoke hours later to the distant thrum of helicopter blades and glimpsed flashing lights through the window. Apparently, my missed mandatory check-ins over the radio had triggered the emergency response protocols when I didn't confirm I was okay. I was airlifted out of those remote woods to a hospital in the nearest town. I spent about a week there, recovering physically from hypothermia, dehydration, and my various wounds while also meeting with counselors to recover emotionally from my trauma. It was a grueling process 
but I'm beyond grateful I pulled through intact. The medical staff were confounded by my mutterings about what had actually happened out there. In the end, lacking any evidence, officials chalked it up to delirium from a wild animal attack and severe disorientation. I eventually stopped trying to convince them it was more. These days I avoid going anywhere near the wilderness, sticking to safe, populated city parks for my outdoor time. After what I endured, the isolation and unchecked danger of the deep woods unnerves me to my core. I doubt I'll ever be able to wander remote forested areas freely alone again. But the memories, as faded as they've become, remind me that I made it through my own personal hell once already. Though I still believe in the existence of the creature, its reality forever remains unproven to anyone else. My pleas for acknowledgement fall on deaf, skeptical ears. No one else alive knows what I faced out there as I fled for my life under the branches of those looming pines. And so, to the wider world, it remains simply the delusion of a trauma-stricken mind. But I know the truth. I felt its rancid breath on my neck and stared into eyes that reflect only primal hunger. Something unnatural lurks beneath the gentle mask of the forest, and I know without doubt that it's still roaming and hunting. No one else may believe such delusions, but I know what haunts the dark shadows between the trees. I was one of the lucky ones. Others may not escape its grasp as I did.